Hey family, what's good? It's your girl in the Bronze Goddess, and I'm actually here today to do another strawberry letter. Before I get into today's video, I want to remind you guys to check out my book, and it is called The Dating Game, How to Find Yourself While Looking for Mr. Right. It's on Create Space, Amazon, and you can also now download it in Kindle. I'll be sure to leave the link to my book at the top of the description box below. And if you entered my giveaway, uh, which was uh, me giving away an autographed copy of my book, your winner's name should be right here. Huge thank you to all of you who entered, and congrats to the winner. Let's go ahead and get started with today's video, let's go get them. I love how you say the truth in every one of your strawberry letters. To the point, I have been dating this guy for five months after four years of ending a bad relationship with a guy who cheated on me constantly and disguised his girlfriend, now wife, as his cousin. I waited four years and met a man who is my friend's brother. Uh, he's everything my dad and my ex are not. He supports me. He never gave me the trouble of asking what we are to each other or what he wants from me. He made it very clear that he wanted a relationship from the onset and a good relationship that would lead to marriage. He's very hard working, he's not shy to admit it, and he goes out of his way to please me and show me that he cares. I told him my stand on premarital sex and BGI was shocked when he not only said it was okay, but when he came to visit me, he didn't even make an attempt. I initiated the only intimate thing we had, which was a kiss at the airport when he was leaving. He talked about settling down early on in the game and met my parents, according to African tradition, and also talked to his mom, which she really likes me. Here's the fun part. He was doing well in his business with his business partners, and my sister who had financial difficulty asked me to use his influence to help her get a job. He was able to find her a job, but uh, she could not start because her child was ill. They proceeded to talk about business and involving her in his business, and when I heard about it, I told him not to involve my family in his business because I did not want to have issues, and I wanted to get to know him a little bit better on my own. My sister heard that and got angry, and so I kept quiet and allowed them to do their business. Money was exchanged, and I'm going to summarize it because it's really, really long. Anyway, they exchanged money and everything and uh, come to find out you know the the man in this letter has always tried to shower the writer with gifts and she's always declined. She says she makes a very good living on her own and she doesn't need a man to do those types of things for, for her, that she loves him for him even though he's very uh, extravagant, he buys lavish gifts, he, he spoils himself with like clothes and material things. Eventually they end up finding out that he is not as high up in the company as he would have everybody believe. It is not his business but uh, his business along with a few of his partners. And she's saying that he said that the house was his and the car was his and the land his house was on was his but come to find out all those things belong to his company and that he didn't have full ownership of any of those things. The more the family, more specifically the sister found out that the uh, boyfriend's role wasn't as high up as she thought, she wanted her money back. And it comes to find out he can't get her money back because, like I said, it's really not his business. He has to go through his partners for everything. So the sister is furious and thinks that the writer should end her relationship with him, thinks that he's a fraud, and is trying to poison the whole family on thinking that he's a fraud. Now, the guy is very sorry for what he's done. He's already apologized to the writer of the letter. He just still wants to be with her. And he's, like he said, he's pretty sorry for allowing them to believe that he had a lot more money and a lot more clout and all of that than he really did. The writer of the letter wants to know what should she do because her sister is threatening to sue him and involve the police and all of this because she feels like she's been duped, cheated out of her money by what she feels is her uh, fraud future brother-in-law. She wants to know what should she do. Now, this is a lot going on clearly, which is why I had to summarize it because there was so much to this particular letter. So I saw this 15-second uh, clip on Instagram once that I thought was really, really hilarious and it definitely kind of rings true for a lot of single people. There was this woman, she was walking along the street, she was looking up at heaven and she was like, God, let me know if he's the one. She looks down at her feet and on a piece of paper written in Sharpie, it says he's not the one. She looks at it, she looks up at God again. God, let me know if he's the one for me. She looks down at the, at, her, at the ground again, and again, it's a little piece of paper with a sharpie on it that said that he is not the one in all caps. And she keeps asking, and God keeps telling her he's not the one. And she keeps coming up with all these excuses for why God must be tripping. Maybe I heard it wrong. Some, maybe there's something lost in translation. But she keeps trying to convince herself that despite the obvious signs that God did not send this person to her, that maybe, just maybe, he is still the one. And I feel like that may be what's going on here. In your letter, you said that you asked God to show you a sign to show you everything about this man. Show you if he's the one or not. And at that time, you start figuring out that he's been lying to you about how much money he has and what all he owns and, and all his possessions and the fact that he's being 
being all extravagant. That's not even his money that he's spending. Like you, you ask God to show you a sign, then you have to be big enough, strong enough, and ready to be able to walk away. I talked about it in my book. You're not ready to be in a relationship until you realize that you don't have to be. Being in a relationship does not complete you. You're not a whole person as long as you're somebody else's better half. You need to be whole and complete on your own. You ask God to show you if he was being honest with you, being real, if, it was, if this was too good to be true, and to come to find out this man was a liar. The whole time you're thinking he's Prince Hakeem, he's actually Prince Hakeem's good friend, Simi. Like, he's, he's just pretending. He's a poser. As for me, myself, personally, I'm not a huge fan of his. There are too many men running around here loose for me to be settling for somebody who's lying to me about major things. You even told me, you said in the letter that you told him that you're fully capable of taking care of yourself. He didn't even have to lie to try to impress you and then you also say in the letter that you make good money so are you sure that he wasn't trying to eventually get you to invest in his company that this isn't a part of some big elaborate scam like who knows what his motives are whenever somebody lies in the very beginning you have to question everything did you lie about this or are you just a stone-cold liar if I never caught you would you never have uh, confessed it, it's a t it's one thing when somebody confesses before you find out but it's another thing when somebody says sorry after they've been caught are you sorry that you got caught or that you sorry that you lied it would take a lot it would take a huge amount of time and effort on his part to ever prove to me that he's worthy of a second chance there is no way after lying about this much for so long that we'd instantly go back to where we were I feel like if you, you need to continue to ask God to show you signs even though I feel like he's already showed you I talked about this before, but a lot of you are new to my channel. There is this, this scene in the Cosby show a long time ago where uh, Bill Cosby makes this analogy. And even though, I, regardless of your feelings about Bill Cosby, there were some good nuggets in the show. Okay, let's just put that out there. But anyway, he was talking about how you want this big juicy steak. So you got this big juicy porterhouse steak, you have this loaded baked potato, you have your favorite vegetable alongside of it, and everything is just beautiful. And it's presented to you, but it's presented to you on a garbage can lid. I feel like that's exactly what he is and how he's how he presented everything to you. He sounded amazing. He was okay with not being intimate with you and waiting on you for your stand on premarital sex. He was kind and loving and patient and all these different things. He got along great with your family. And but you find out after all those types of things that he was a liar underneath it all. I just I don't trust him. I don't trust him because I don't like the way the situation was presented to you. I, I know that your sister's motives for wanting you guys to break up are selfish in some way, but I also think that she may know as well that your family is giving you a bad vibe about him because I feel like there's a lot to him that you may not be able to see. Sometimes love has you blind. Love is like, sometimes love has you where you're like looking at a picture really up close, and sometimes when you're looking at a picture this close, you can't see it for what it truly is. And it's not until you're able to take a step back where you're able to get the full picture. Okay, oh, you know what? You ever fall in love with somebody and everybody told you the person was bad and then you you break up with them and you start thinking about it and you're like how did I miss all these obvious signs like he was no good from the beginning everybody tried to tell me but you couldn't see it because you were too close to the situation I feel like you should at the very least take a step back from the situation so that you could get a good idea for what it truly is when God asks, shows you signs that you ask for you have to be willing to listen to them don't, don't ignore them and keep asking God the same question that you already know the answer to. Is he trustworthy? You already know the answer is no. So the only good thing going for him is the fact that he got along with your family. He doesn't even anymore, but he got along well with your family. You thought he had some money. You didn't want his money, but you thought he had some money. And he was okay with waiting to have sex with you. Somebody else will wait to have sex with you. Let there be more to him than that. Anyway, that is my uh, take on it. I'm sure you guys may agree or disagree. Be sure to tell me in the comment section. And if you guys want to check out my book, it's called The Dating Game, How to Find Yourself While Looking for Mr. Right. It's on Create Space, Amazon, and also downloadable in Kindle form. Of course, I will link my book at the top of the description box. Congrats again to the winner. I'll leave your name right here again for you. I love you guys. And be sure to check out my playlist if you enjoy these types of videos from your girl. I'll see you in the next one. Till next time, later divas and dudes. Deuces, honey.